Hello and welcome to this new tutorial on EMGU CV. Today I'm going to show you how we can perform shape detection using EMGU CV library. The objective is uh, using find contours method in EMGU CV. We will find the contours and then apply some geometrical constraints on these contours to obtain shapes, different types of shapes. So let's get started. The project is configured to use EMGU CV 3.4. So if you have any uh, issues with configuring the project, you can check one of my previous videos. Right click on this project, go to Aid, and uh, you can select a Windows form. Give it a name, Form Shape Detection, for example, and then click on Aid. So let me design quickly this form so that I can read images and display it on the in this form. I'll first drag and drop a menu item first and then maybe I need to drag and drop a table layout. Maybe we need a table layout. Remove the last row. I just need two columns and then we can dock it. I just want to put it all like this, okay? And then we need two picture boxes, one to display the input image and another one is to display the output image. And I also need to do one more thing here is I just want to auto size it. And this one is also auto size so that it will uh, adjust according to size of my picture so let me write it as file and then we will open image using this open menu and uh, detect shape so the first thing that i want to do is to read an image and display it in picture box one okay so double click on open the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that the EMGU CV library is available to use in your code. So first we will do that using EMGU.CV and then EMGU.CV dot what else we need is the structure basically. And also since I need to find the contours, I need another uh, namespace emgu dot cv dot utilities the vector of vector structure is present in this utility file so the first thing that i need to do is to allow the user to open an image so let me do it like this try in a cage so if there is an exception i just would like to show a message m s M box tape tape this way we will open this dial this this will write the code for the message box and uh, here we can just directly show the error message that we received just to make sure that the program doesn't crash and then I would like to use open file dialog I just name it dialog equals new open file dialog so we created an object for the open file dialog and now we would like to show this to the user dialog dot show dialog so once the user selects a file then the dialog will return and dialog dialog result dot okay it means that user selects a, a file and it clicks okay then we will be able to read it and I would like to read this image into a, uh, an object. So I will create the variable for that uh, object. So that will be type of image. And we would like a BGR image, three channel image, and whose depth is in bytes. And I call it IMG input. So once the user selects it, I want to read the image into this input so I create the object of the 
image and pass the you can say the string name we can pass the path of that file so that that will be that image will be read into img input object so here i will select the path selected by the user file name and that's it and uh, i would like to read it into and show it into picture box one so i am picture box one dot image equals to img input dot it has a property of big map and then this one will convert this image into a bitmap and assign it to the image property of the image box which will basically display this image so let's run this application and check if it works fine so far so let's open an image and here i have like shape one okay so perfect so it is displaying this image and now it's time to detect different shapes what kind of shapes those are the rectangle the square triangle etc so let's see how to do that so go to this uh, interface and double click on detect shape so this is the event in which we are going to perform the shape detection the first thing that i would like to make sure that img input is not equal to now that that will make sure that an image has been already read if it is now I should say something like this if it is now then I should return do nothing that's just to make sure that we have read something and then as usual we will use the try cage it's a good practice I believe so M box tab tab and then display the error message if we have anything in it so what I want to do is uh, the input image is basically a color image so I want to convert it into a grayscale image perform some smoothing on it first I think and then convert it into grayscale image and uh, then threshold that image to get a binary mask for it or a binary image so let me create a temporary variable and the first thing that I want to do is perform smoothing so we can use the smoothing uh, by Gaussian operation and this one requires a kernel so let me pass a kernel 5 by 5 it is not uh, mandatory but because I have a very uh, compact and clear shapes but still if you have some noise in it it will uh, remove that noise suppress that noise it's like a low pass filter and then I want to convert it into a grayscale image so it will be gray and still the depth is in bytes so it will convert into a grayscale image and now i want to perform a threshold binary and uh, i want to perform a threshold binary inversion it means uh, since my background is well, as you saw that the background color was uh, in white color so i need the inversion of that basically the, when we say threshold it says that the values greater than x will be uh, considered and then uh, less than those will not be considered but in this case i want to remove the background so i perform the inverse of it what i want to say is that if new gray let's say the threshold value is 230 if the threshold value is greater than 230 then remove it it's like that not remove it replace it with this one 255 so i i hope it makes sense now and then close it so this line basically performs two or three operations together first i perform some smoothing operation convert it into a grayscale image and then i perform the thresholding and this is the inverse thresholding what it means is that the values 
greater than 230 will be removed or in other words we should say that the values less than 230 will be replaced by 255 it is because my background color was white in color so i wanted to remove the white color as a background so the next thing uh, that I want to do, since I want to perform the uh, contours, find the contours, so for that we need vector of vector of points so that the contours are stored inside this object and just call them contours, post new vector of vector of points. So this retains information about the contours and also we need to create a main object. This is just to maintain the uh, hierarchy information that is required by the find contours uh, method. So at the moment, I'm not going to use the contour hierarchy information. We don't need this actually. Now let's find the contours by calling the find contours method. And this method basically requires input output an image on which we would like to perform the uh, control operation. So let me pass 10. And then we need to pass the object in which which will return the contours into this object. And uh, this the third parameter requires the uh, in this third parameter it returns the hierarchy information of these contours and uh, this is very important to tell that the return type of the retrieval type is we want the external contours so when we have external contours we don't have any hierarchical information and the method that we have is chain approximation method through which how you will um, get the contours it is the simple ones. The most important contours um, points will be retrieved and the rest will be uh, discarded. For example, in a square, we need only four points. So this one will make uh, sense, I think. And once we have the contours in the contours uh, object, now we can further apply some geometrical constraints or other approximations to find out what kind of uh, object we have based on their contours so what i need to do is i need to loop through all the contours and then apply some conditions on them to find out what type of contours we have so what i need to do i will apply a for loop integer one it starts from zero and i need to go to contours that size how many contours do I have? So this is very important here. First, what we would like to do is to, since we have the contour, and now we would like to approximate the uh, shape of the contour. So by approximation means we would like to find out a subset of points that could still um, maintain the shape of uh, that contour. So uh, to approximate that, first I need to find out the parameter of the contour. So let me say double parameter equals to cv invoke dot arc length will return you the contour parameter or the length of the arc. And this one is, and we would like to pass contours one by one so I need to give it an index the zero two one two three four and since we are assuming that these are closed shapes and the contours are also closed so I should pass it as true the next thing and is very important is to approximate the shape of the contour so CV invoke dot approximate we will use the approx poly as you can see the approximates a polygon curve with the specified precision and this precision is very important so I will pass in this uh, contour I and then I want to so the second thing is we, we need to store the result in uh, in a point we can say that vector of point approx equals new 
vector of points so here the uh, result of approximation will be stored and now this precision is very important what this precision basically represents is the approximation accuracy that is once we represent a shape with a lesser number of points then this will be the maximum distance between the original curve and uh, what the we approximated uh, curve so we can uh, apply normally it should be between according to this and uh, the reference that i provided it should be between one and a five percent so i will be using zero four multiply by the parameter so how this one give you about approximately four percent of the parameter and the last one is i said it is a closed contour so i will pass it as true so the results approximated result the with this uh, epsilon or the approximation accuracy will be applied on the contour and the points which are about four percent will be uh, returned into my uh, approximate variable so once i have the approximate uh, or the estimated contour that i have then uh, i can basically apply some constraints on it maybe uh, first i'll show these contours into on my uh, original shape cv invoke dot draw contours and uh, here uh, i just want to show them on the img input dot img input and we have contours and i can pass the contour id and uh, the color that i would like to give is 0 255 255 and uh, you can also pass the thickness it is optional somehow and picture box 2 dot at least image equals img input dot bitmap and then now let's run this file open it and there are the shapes okay and it detect shape so uh, perfect so so far we have these contours drawn around it let me change this color shouldn't be like this i i prefer to use another color or maybe red color let me run it again once file open it and then find the shape okay file detect okay fine so so far we found the contours and now we would like to find out what the contours are and then uh, display their names okay so far so good let me just comment it out so the next important thing that we uh, we would like to uh, understand is to find the uh, centroid of every shape so how can we find the centroid of those shapes then for that we need to use the concept of what we call the moments so these moments can be used to find different things like the shape the area or the measure or minor axis of the these contours and a different uh, invariants we can find uh, different invariants also but over here we would like to find the you can say center of the shape using the contours so in uh, EMGUC, we, we calculate the moments by using the moments function. So I will create a variable, I call it moments, equals CV invoke dot moments. And uh, this one requires basically the contours for which we would like to find the moments. And for each contour, I need the moment, so I will pass the uh, contours by indexing the first, second, third, and the fourth, and so on and so forth. 
Okay, once we have the moments, we can use the moments to find the centroid of each shape. So how we can do that, let's find the X coordinate. And to find the X coordinate, we can use the moments dot M one zero. Yes, the one zero special moment. And we need to divide it by uh, zero moment M zero zero. And uh, hmm, what is the problem? I think, uh, yeah, okay. Since this is returning a double for us, you can see the moments are basically returning double. So maybe we can convert it into an integer. Okay, perfect. I will use call control C and then control V. Mm -hmm. Control C, control V. So we will repeat this for the Y coordinate. Only one thing that we need to do is zero one is to and then divided it by the zeroth moment to find the y coordinate so once we have the x and y coordinate and uh, we have also the approximate um, poly now we can apply a condition and what kind of shape is it if the approximate dot size that is the number of uh, points is equal to three i mean if there are three points we believe that it should be a triangle and uh, we should do something there like this cv invoke dot put text so we will display this text on that uh, img input and uh, we can say that this is a tri triangle and uh, and here it needs a point where we in this one will put the text is the x and y coordinates that we just calculated and uh, huh, font face that what kind of font face let's say that this is the simple one and uh, the scale let me say 0 0.5 and uh, the color okay the color that i would like to display is let's say a red color zero and zero and 255 okay and then the next what it needs is the thickness let me say thickness is one so such a long statement maybe i should break this one and show the half of the parameters over here okay now you can see it so all of these just to put the text at the center of uh, the shape and then what I will do just use the magic of copy and paste this is for square or rectangle this one will be for let's say a pentagon and this one maybe for Oh, hexagon I think it's enough let's say if we have four points corners then it should be a, a rectangle or a square and we should distinguish between them uh, let me try so if it is six we can say it is a hexagon or it's more than six then we can say it is circle or something this is hexagon and then it is rectangle so the, the question is and at the end of the day uh, i just need to display it in picture box one or picture box two dot image equals to img um, input dot bitmap okay let me try once and see what is going on file open it and we have a shape file here and open it it detect oh so it is good we have a triangle, rectangle, hexagon, circle, 
and rectangle so but this is ideally it is rectangle but it should be a square so to distinguish between the square and a rectangle think about it that the width of the rectangle is always greater than the height so we can uh, apply some uh, aspect ratio that is if we divide the width by its height if it is greater than one then probably it should be a rectangle if it is equal to one it is it should be a square so let's find out the bounding box and then using the width and the height we can distinguish between the re rectangle and the square so uh, let me go where is the rectangle so instead of displaying it the first thing that i should check is cv invoke dot bounding rectangle and the bounding rectangle for which one contours i okay and this bounding rectangle returns a rectangle so let's create a rectangle rc equals bounding rectangle so now we can check let's say double aspect ratio equals to rectangle dot width divided by rectangle dot height but it will since this one is integer so it will consider an integer division that's why i just converted this one into uh, a double so that we can have a double result and now i can check if AR is greater than or equal to one. So it's greater than one, then I consider it that since the width is greater than the height, then, uh, and also it can be less than. <laughs> well, ideally it shouldn't be, but that can be a situation or here it is finally I found it. <laughs> or uh, AR is less than let's say hmm I should say if it is greater than or equal to uh, 0.95 and AR is less than or equal to um, maybe some point five or maybe zero five let's say then it is basically a square i should say it is not a rectangle let me copy and paste this and this is a square let me check if it works else if it doesn't work then we will make it work i'm sorry about that Let's run it. Okay, file open and go to the shape. I hope you have a shape image. <laughs> and then detect shape. Wow, but this is totally wrong because it said it is greater than it. And uh, okay, I made a huge mistake here. It is not and, it is not or, it should be and operator. Okay, let me try it again. <laughs> File open. It's programmers when we have a bad day. <laughs> so, file detect shape. And now that is perfect. So, the condition is working fine that it might not be exactly equal to one the ratio between width and height so that's why we just made it between it if it is in between this then it is a square that is uh, nearly same width and height then we square and if it is very much bigger than that then it is a rectangle i hope you enjoyed the video and hope to see you in the next video so take care, goodbye.